director, she stands there and I'm direct. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sister Gretchen Heiler, and um, I'm a religious of the Sacred Heart of Mary, and I'm really a privilege today to talk to, uh, to Bishop Jerry Wilkerson. He's the regional um, uh, bishop here in the San Fernando region, and today we're at the San Fernando Regional Congress. So we've got a few hundred people here that, that teach catechism, they teach in schools, they do all kinds of wonderful stuff in parishes. And I noticed today that uh, he was giving a workshop, and it was something like, that you're not supposed to have a parish anymore? <laughs> what, what was that all about? Uh, no. Well, that. given I, I, it's, it's one that I've worked on before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, uh, you know, there's, there's so many challenges for the church today. And then my question was, is the parish structure yeah. the, the way that we do, still the way we do church today? That's right, yeah. And um, I, uh, I didn't have any brilliant ideas about if you didn't have the parish structure, what would you do? Um, Did you get any good answers from the folks? Or, no, or, no. I, but I didn't ask them that question. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> because I said, I said, you know, it really doesn't matter what structure you have. What is important is the focus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I said, I think that if where our parishes are failing, if they are failing, or where there are struggles mm -hmm. and problems, is because they've lost focus. And I think that the, that the focus has to be the person of Jesus Christ. And that's really what evangelization is. You know, the old evangelization was to bring the gospel to the people out there. But the new evangelization mm -hmm. is to bring the gospel to ourselves. Absolutely. And uh, so when we do that, then Jesus has to become the focus, the center. And in so many parishes, you know, we're human beings. And yeah. in so many parishes, we get the old thinking. We've always so, done it this, this way, way. Yeah. you know. Or we get the rivalries. Uh, and we forget why we're there, who we are, that the person of Jesus has to be the focus for the parish. And when it becomes the focus for for the Eucharistic ministers, for the lectors, for the youth group, for the parish council, whatever. That's right. There, the, the, then that's, we have good parishes. That, that's the cohesiveness, exactly. and, and that's what happened in the primitive community. That's mm -hmm. why they were so fired up. Yeah. We always use, we look to them to see what evangelization was like, because they were the original evangelizers. When you think about it, you Correct. know, and um, uh, and and so. One lady today, I gave a workshop on uh, aging with grace, and she came up and she said, you know, I've been trained by the Archdiocese to be a bereavement minister, she said, but I can't even get my foot in there because there's people that have been doing that for so many years, Father trusts them, and it's just going to go on business as usual. Yes. And I said, well, you know what you need to do? You need to bite the bullet, you need to be humble enough, and you need to go to the pastor and simply say, do you have a minute? I just need to give a reflection to you about what I think about something here, Excellent. you know? Right. And uh, she said, well, I'd kind of be a little nervous. I said, don't be nervous. Just even you can say that. Father, I'm a little bit nervous to say this to you, but you know what? There's some people that are controlling things, and we're not moving forward, and we got a lot of grieving people and nobody to serve them. Absolutely. Yeah. I had one of the people that in my workshop said to me after I finished, and I said, I had questions, and uh, this one person said, uh, you gave a great workshop, uh, Bishop, but uh, have, the, have the priests heard this? <laughs> because leadership is also uh, a, focal, a focal point, I think. Yes, yeah. And it's not, but when we say leadership these days, it's not just the priests. It's got to be the lay leadership. It's got to be a, a collaboration of, of really the whole group of parishioners mm -hmm. that make a parish go. And you know, they have to meet. They yeah. have to they have to know each other. They have to know each other's giftedness and sometimes their limitations so that you mess up, you know, you, if you just let them pass in, you know, in the in the night, you're not linking them together with what my giftedness yeah. is not yours and yours is not mine. That's why we need a team. Correct. That's why we need a, a church. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All the gifts. Yeah. make a whole mm -hmm. that's you know? true. and everybody has different gifts and, and that's the genius I think in a certain sense of the parish community when it's done right mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. it calls forth and the pastor needs to enable the gifts to come forward and to work together and then then the parish is effective you walk into a parish like that and you know right away you know you're at home you know that there's something happening here there's there's life there's energy uh, that's a spirit. It, it's great. Yeah. Sometimes I think uh, if you if you go to a parish and you pick up their bulletin and you open it up, 
you know right away what's going on there. <laughs> yes. Because if it's this slim, you know, you're wondering what's going on here. Or you see the same people who's one, the same guy's in charge of the senior ministry, he's in charge of RCIA and he's in <laughs> charge of this. You're saying, but there are other people out there exactly. that are willing to do it, but nobody ever asks that's them. That's right. You know? That's so right. I think that's a really important thing. Uh, I you think, know. I, you know, a lot of people don't know how gifted they are. So uh, enabling them to, or helping them to find their gifts and then to, to direct them to use those gifts for the good of others. Mm -hmm. It's extraordinary. It's, it's you really know, important. years ago, I used to work for Franciscan Communications, and so I did a lot of workshops because they were freebies. You know, the publisher always picks up the tab, right? So yes. you go in and do these different things. And I was down with the um, Presbyterian uh, Church down in, uh, in Louisville, and um, I was sitting with the other speakers at lunch, and they were saying, well, did you, have you taken the, uh, the giftedness program yet? And <laughs> have you taken the, and apparently they had, for their particular synod, they had a program that they brought to all those congregations, and it was to decide, you know, to, to figure out what your strength was, and then to put it at the service of the yes, congregation. Yes. I thought it was brilliant, you know, and, and that was years ago. And I, That's and, wonderful. Yeah. And you know, there is a program today, we, we've been using it here in the region, uh, Making Disciples. Oh, yes. From yes. the Catherine of Siena Institute, and one component of that is that very thing, mm -hmm. helping people to know their giftedness, and to uh, to grow in that giftedness, and then be able to share that gift giftedness with others. It's, it's extraordinary. It, it's and beautiful. you know, and to and to compliment one another when they yeah. do something nice. You right. know, I I always um, I always go to the priest afterward to you know if he's done a if he's done a good job in just the crafting of his homily, and I'll always go up and say, you know, Father, I've never met you before, but you certainly did a wonderful homily. And he said, well, thank you very much. And um, and I think you know. When a friend of mine now, when I go to his parish and I don't compliment him, he'll say, what, what, what did I do? I said, it was lousy. You made it up from the rectory over to the ambo. You know, so anyway, he starts laughing. But so we need to compliment one another when we do, we do something. You, you know, know, people sometimes would say that to me. I really liked, liked your homily, Bishop. And I say, oh, yeah, well, what did I say? <laughs> oh, my goodness, that's the wrong question. <laughs> then I'm really humble. That's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. And there's so many, so many good-hearted mm. people. And, um, and, and once again, my focus lately has been on the seniors in the parishes, the older persons. And, uh, and you know, we had a lovely document from the um, Pontifical Council on the Laity in 1999, but no one knows about it. And it talks about the importance and the dignity of the older person in church and society. And, and you have people that, that want to give their gifts, but they might be on a walker and nobody asks them to carry yes. the gifts up. And yes. they're perfectly capable of taking their walker and walking up with the gifts. <laughs> but nobody, they go, oh, no, 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 we don't want, it, it looks really bad, yes. you know, when they, so. And some people feel a little shy about that, but they just need a little encouragement. Absolutely. I, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. You know, it, it, it just uh, occurred to me thinking, talking about uh, homilies and what people get out of them, and sometimes people say, you know, I just needed to hear that, and then they'll tell me what they heard, and I'm saying to myself, I didn't say that at all. But this is, isn't it amazing how sometimes that's the way the Spirit works? That's right. Enables us to hear mm -hmm. what we need to hear at that moment, even though the words might be just a little bit different than, than you thought. No, it wasn't it, the point I was making at all, no, it's but true. it was the point for that person, yeah. which is wonderful. Yeah, and uh, you know, the more parishes that I visit for different things, I might be given a bereavement ministry thing or whatever, and I can see the vitality just by them sitting in front of me. Yeah. And the other thing that's quite wonderful too is if the pastor or the associate pastor or the deacon comes over and says, can I sit in for just a few minutes? And what that tells the people is they want to not only be hospitable, but they also want to learn something. Of course. You see, and that when they look and they go, why did the deacon come? Why did the <laughs> priest come? Why did the pastor? And I said, because they thought obviously that it was a nice thing for them to maybe pop in and say hi to you guys but mm -hmm. also they might have said gee maybe i can learn something and we always can learn yeah, something yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely I, I mean you the problem is sometimes we really just don't listen that's right and when you don't listen you don't learn that's right yeah. uh, when you've already made up your mind about some person's problem without even listening or some person's gift and haven't really listened to that person gosh that, that's that's really that's not respecting the, the person or the gifts. That whole thing of active listening. A, yes. a lot of people listen, waiting for that pause so yeah. they can jump in and say they're really important. Correct. Thing, you know? That's yeah. right. So. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, there's a lot to learn. But um, 
and I think that's what, what Pope Francis is saying to us today, is he says you need to walk with people and listen, mm -hmm. you know? And that, that, that uh, evangelization is being a friend, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. being a friend and yeah. say, let me walk with you, this is the, we're all on a journey. Let me, let, let's walk together for a while. One of the things that he mentioned in that, uh, that recent interview with the um, Republica and, and the different um, uh, Jesuit magazines and such, um, was the fact that um, there are people that uh, write to him or they call him and he talks to them, yeah, you know? Like, and I'm no. thinking, this, this has got to be okay, a, 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 a prototype of something new that the Holy Spirit is doing. That's amazing. And so I guess they're telling us we have to wrap yeah, up. Yeah, we have but to wrap up. Thanks for the uh, it's, conversation. It's been fun. It's been and, great. And, and I, uh, I wish you well. And, thank and you. you. And you're, um, are, you, are you still the bishop of... Uh, I'm still the, the bishop here. And, yeah, uh, and, and but about the conference. Oh, uh, we have one more thing today. We have the uh, the closing mass. Oh, okay. And good, so I good. think that's going to be live streamed as yeah, well. Yeah, so good. Oh, we'll that's hope great. the folks will join us. Then. Excellent. Good. Great. Thanks. And I'm glad to know that my other interview that uh, <laughs> that my face was covered with the plant. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> as it should be. Right? As it, well, I didn't say that. <laughs>